Welcome everyone to another episode of the VM Blog Expert interview series. And today we have a newcomer to the show, Alex Drag, the Director of Product Marketing at Gravity. Alex, welcome. Yes, thanks, David. I appreciate you, uh, you having me on and looking forward to our conversation. Same here. I always enjoy talking to, uh, to new folks who, uh, who we haven't spoken to before, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, likewise. So since it's new to me, for many VM blog viewers, it may be new to them as well. But uh, this, this is the first time that we've, we've talked to you about Gravity. Can you talk sure. about what your solution offers and how it's uh, improving the experience of API management? Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, at, at a high level, Gravity is, is helping organizations solve problems that span the entirety of the API lifecycle. So all the way really from API ideation and design all the way to deprecation. There's a lot of stuff in the middle, right? When people typically think about API management, API gateways come up, they're thinking about API creation, API exposure. We do all of that as well. Um, but we do we do address that entirety of, of the API lifecycle. So if you think about sort of these two stakeholders, right, in what you might think of as the API transaction, right? So there's your API producer or publisher, the person who's typically <clears throat> using and creating an API to expose something to the client or consumer side. This could be data, could be functionality, could be a variety of things. Right? Using an API uh, as that sort of exposure exposure mechanism to get something to their their clients and consumers. And there's the consumer side. I think somebody like the application developer, they need an API to do X, Y, or Z so that they can build their application uh, and leverage that functionality. Right? So you have producer and consumer. The producer is very concerned about ensuring that the right APIs get exposed to and then consumed by only the right sets of consumers. And you want to make sure that that exposure and consumption, that transaction is secure, reliable, efficient, both efficient technically and from a cost perspective, of course. I mean, Gravity really does does help folks, especially there around the creation, exposure, security bit, but also on the discoverability side for the consumer. So if you think I'm some API consumer, I'm some developer, I need to go get an API to do a certain thing, I need to consume my app or subscribe my application to that API so it can accomplish a specific thing. And what we also do is help that discovery process. So you can put your API on what is called an API developer portal or an API catalog. Once you've created it, publish it there. Developers can go find it, see the documentation, subscribe to it in self-service. So you can truly create these API products. And, and where, where is Gravity really, how are we doing this differently? How are we making API management a whole lot easier and more really more enjoyable for a lot of the teams that we work with? Um, I already mentioned that it's that covering that entirety of the full life cycle, right? There's no need to go stitch a bunch of different um, disparate tools together to cover that entire API life cycle. Gravity handles it all with one approach. And then the other big thing um, is our support for a vast variety of backend resources. So that can be things like traditional REST APIs, it could be SOAP web services, gRPC, it could be Graph, GraphQL, that is, sorry, I speak in short uh, in terminology sometimes. Um, but also the event broker side of the house. So last year we introduced this whole concept, I guess it's probably a year or two ago, I lose track of time. We introduced this new concept of event native API management. And that essentially refers to your ability to use Gravity just like you would for a normal REST API management use case, but actually expose your event broker resources, things like Kafka, Confluent, Red Panda, Solace, RabbitMQ, MQTT brokers as APIs to the client side so those client applications can securely and reliably consume and produce data from those real-time data streams. Now, before we talk, doing a little bit of research, just checking out uh, Gravity on the web page. It looks like uh, Gravity's worldview is that there are three key pillars to good API management. Can you outline what those three pillars are and maybe provide a little bit more detail into each? Absolutely. Yeah. And the way that we we see these pillars, it's it's somewhat forward looking, right? We we see the market changing, um, customer client cha client uh, use cases and requirements are are changing rapidly, um, and to address these rapidly changing market requirements. We see these three pillars, what we refer to really as modern API management. The first is, I've already mentioned one of them, event native. The ability to use the API gateway, the API management layer, as it means not to just expose your traditional REST APIs. Yes, they have to continue doing that. The world runs on REST and it will continue to in many areas of the universe, but also for this event broker and asynchronous API side of the house. The API gateway works super well. Let's use it for all these ver this ver wide variety of backend resources, including the streaming and event broker side of the house. 
That second pillar is what we call multi-gateway. So I've already mentioned that I've talked a little about this sort of consolidation using one gateway, one solution for a vast variety of API management and API use cases across the organization. And that's great. That works really well for a lot of orgs. But there are some orgs that just kind of inherently pick up a bunch of gateways along the way, right? So you kind of take a step back, you're thinking about, well, how am I going to ensure that API governance is running properly here? So you look at your API ecosystem and you realize, oh my gosh, I've got three or four gateways running around, right? So you kind of have a choice here. Well, there's really three choices. Choice one is always to do nothing and just kind of let it remain that way. So you've got these sort of data and API silos, each exposing, securing APIs a little bit differently. Option number two is try and migrate off of all of those onto one consolidated solution, which can work really well. We have some customers that have done that and it's been awesome. Um, but you're now forcing some teams that might wanna to use tool A to use tool B and that's not the greatest developer experience, right? And sometimes it doesn't even make sense technically. There are certain use cases where different solutions make more sense. And then option three is what we see as sort of a multi-gateway approach to API management. How can you sort of abstract API management out of just the API gateway, extract it away from the gateway and have an API management governance layer that sort of exists on top of your entire API gateway stack so that you can have a single sort of pane of glass to control, to govern, manage, secure, expose, publish uh, APIs that might be deployed onto multiple API gateways around the org. So we that's where we see the market going, to be very clear. Um, we think that you're going to have to have solutions for the consolidation, but also this multi-gateway universe because big orgs have lots of gateways. It's just kind of a, almost like a law of the universe. Um, and then the third one is what we say a, call AI forward. Um, so everyone's talking about AI. I recognize that. Um, and, and so we, we kind of see this AI thing a little bit differently. Uh, a lot of software solutions are not just in API management, but all over this sort of dev tool landscape. They're figuring out ways to use AI to make their tools more efficient, better. That's great. We think that's awesome. And we think that belongs in the API management universe as well. So that's sort of the first half is actually infusing the API management stack with AI to make API publication exposure security a whole lot easier. But the second half of that is actually using API management, API gateways as a means to help organizations better leverage AI themselves. All right, so if the first is using AI to make API management better, the second is using API management to make AI better in New York. So you think about things like AI proxies, we have a proxy layer in front of your LLMs, something like that, controlling who can consume, who can submit certain prompts, who can get certain information out of an LLM. Uh, a large language model, for for example. So it's those three pillars. Event native, using the gateway to be able to expose, manage event streams as well as traditional APIs. The multi-gateway um, approach where you have API, an API management strategy and solution set that an, empowers your teams to use whatever sort of gateway infrastructure that they might want to, at st still at high security, high governance. And the third being AI forward, once again, AI to make API management better and API management to make AI better. So you, you touched on it a little bit already. Uh, you know, you can't really have a conversation in, in the world of technology right now without mentioning AI. Uh, you know, you talked about that third pillar, uh, uh, which encompasses AI. But how, where do you think AI's role uh, is uh, in, you know, modern API management? Sure. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's tough to answer this question and be 100% for sure of your answer, right? Because AI is changing a million things that it seems like a million miles per hour. So I do, we have opinions, right, on, on where AI should play in API management, but who knows what that looks like five years down the line. There could be something that AI introduces on the API management side that it blows all of our minds, right? But let's just take, let, let's just take two examples. Um, one sort of on the, the, let's think about something like documentation inspection generation, right? Something that I know we're super interested in here is actually helping organizations generate schemas, generate specs based on things like API consumption patterns and traffic patterns, right? That's something you can train a model on. So, okay, when this is happening, then this, then this, then this, you can actually use AI to help generate schema specifications. So that's one sort of the design and documentation side, which is a, it, that's a, that alleviates a huge headache on the API publisher and producer side of the house. But let's think about things like security, right? Can can you, you know, today when you're thinking about like gateway logic um, that you're enforcing at the mode of transaction, typically it's relatively hard coded. It's if this, then this, if this, then do this. If 
this specific set of criterion is met or not met, then gateway allow this or don't allow this, right? It's all hard coded. It works quite well, but you could have a bit more flexibility there, right? Where maybe AI is able to actually look at historical traffic consumption patterns. Um, and then you might even be able to tell it, say, okay, when someone is trying to consume this resource to accomplish X, Y, or Z. So take, for example, I don't know, say, no, no PII will ever be able to be exposed to a set of API consumers, just as an arbitrary example. Instead of having to hard code each kind of PII, right, that can't be exposed, the AI might be able to be smart enough, right, and so say, okay, well, here's this thing that someone's trying to get, right, and there's PII that's going to be involved, and we're going to shut that request down, right, or we're going to strip that from the actual response, for example. Um, so those, those are just two areas, right, where I think AI could, could really help API management solutions. Um, there's that other side where API management is necessary for the leveraging of AI as well. And I think that really, I mean, that, that could evolve in so many different ways. But I think as of today and in the near term, it really is ensuring that um, whatever models that you might want your consumers to be able to consume, think about something like ChatGPT, right? Someone comes to that, the, the chat client and they want to ask a question right now that's easily abused from a security perspective you can try and try and try and maybe you find a crack in the system um, and you're able to now get this LLM to return something that you don't want it to be able to return right something like a gateway or an API management solution could be put in there in the middle to basically guard against certain prompts also to control costs it costs a lot of money right when these things are constantly being consumed 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 you could use something like API management to enforce quota limits or rate limits for something like an LLM, just like you do today with REST API with REST APIs. Rate limits, quota limits, that is sort of bread and butter of traditional REST API management. You'll be able to apply it in the, in the same way that you would be able to, um, to REST API for these AI use cases. Now, another challenge that's out there that companies are facing is, is API sprawl. How does uh, Gravity help companies uh, deal with that problem? Yeah, so this really, well, I guess you think the multi-gateway and the event native pillars, right? Both of them touch on it. So if you think about the, let's actually start with just the event native um, bit. So you think, okay, I have Kafka running around, right? Now I want to be able to expose this data from Kafka as an event API. Traditionally, API management solutions really haven't been able to step up, right? They haven't really been able to help folks actually get more ROI out of their event streaming infrastructure, which is very expensive to implement, by the way. So ROI is paramount here. Um, so if you have, yes, your REST APIs, yes, your SOAP, yes, your GraphQL, yes, your gRPC services, you have all these things running around, you need to ensure that you have one layer that sort of sits on top of all of that for consistent, governable, secure exposure, right? You don't want what are called ghost APIs, which is oftentimes a result of things like API sprawl, where you have all these various kinds of APIs running around the org and different teams. Um, really what Gravity is, is enabling folks to do is unify that sort of that API management experience across all of those various kinds of APIs, right? With, with one single layer, one pane of glass to be able to essentially control consumption and for security, publish for consumer visibility and discoverability, and of course, be able to audit and see measurement analytics and metrics and all that sort of stuff. Now, changing things up a bit, uh taking things away from technology itself. Sure. Uh, I know Gravity, you, you guys are, are hosting a uh, conference called Edge later in the month of June. Can you tell viewers about the event and if, they, if they're interested, maybe how to sign up for it? Yeah, absolutely. So that is uh, it's June 25th, the 27th, I believe are the days of, of Edge. Um, yeah, it's three days. It's a virtual event. Anyone can can sign up. We'll be talking about all sorts of things there. Um, definitely these, these pillars, we'll be giving our take on that. But really the most important thing about this event is not so much what we have to say, but we have our, our customers and other folks in our community that are coming to also present, give their takes on uh, where API management is today, where it needs to go. They'll be talking all about how they've been able to um, satisfy and solve for certain API management challenges. Um, in their organizations. So it should be really great. We hosted this last year for the first time and it was really, really awesome. So we're expecting a great turnout again and, and a great set of sessions. To sign up, all you have to do is go to edge.gravity.io and that's gravity with two E's. Um, I know it's typically spelled with one Y, but it's two E's. So edge.gravity.io, you'll be able to register for free. And um, once again, June 25th through the 27th, we're talking a lot about um, 
these pillars specifically, and we even have some some special stuff ready for those that uh, that do attend. So some stuff we can't talk about yet, but it's a it's a surprise for signing up for it. That's for sure. Well, that's great, and I'll put the uh, the link to to the event in the show notes as well, so so people can awesome. find it. Great. Now, before I let you go, where can viewers go if they want to learn more about the company and some of the things that you talked about today? Absolutely. Well, we're everywhere most companies are. Um, you can find us on LinkedIn. You can, of course, go to our uh, go to our website. That's gravity.io. Um, so you can head there. You've got all the information you might need. And once again, I would say also sign up for Edge. You learn a lot about a lot about Gravity. I mean, you can find us on LinkedIn. Find us on our website. Where we've got a bunch of stuff on YouTube. Um, we've got a pretty pretty large, sizable open source community as well. So you can go check out our community form or go check out our GitHub. Um, there's lots of places to learn about Gravity. Um, but yeah, probably the, the website's the first one and then check out those other places as well if you're interested. That's great. Well, Alex, I appreciate you taking time to speak to uh, to uh, VM blog viewers today and uh, hopefully we'll uh, have a chance to catch up again. Yeah, that sounds great. Thank you so much. All right.